Now we'll get on to a couple of mitres. Now I've got one of these super duper Nobex saws, and if you're really serious about getting into woodwork in an apartment, in a unit, flat, or inside, I honestly think you should get something like this. Doesn't have to be this particular one, but something that's gonna saw mitres accurately and quietly. Failing that, if you haven't got one or you don't want to get one, then we can go back to what we made in a previous video, which is the shooting board. So obviously with this one, you would then cut as close as you can to 45 degrees, put it into this slot here. Oh, please, Bob, what's it doing? Oh, live TV, you gotta love it. But put it in there and then you shoot it and that'll give you your 45. I'm gonna use the Nobex, but believe me, the shooting board and an ordinary saw would do just as well. It's just, this is quicker and I've got it. Now I'm gonna cut the 45 degrees, but make sure that the shortest part, the pointy bits on the outside, the shortest part is with the rebate. And that's the wrong way around, so I'm just gonna change this around to 45. I'll just move that up as a depth stop. That way, when I put the other piece up, it's going to cut at the same place. Now what I've got to do is cut one side here, one side here. So on the inside, measure 350. There we have a nice length for the long side. But you'll notice this one doesn't line up. So we've got to cut this again only at this angle. And there we've got a nice join with the mouldings marrying up reasonably well. Now what I've got to do, I measured a long side last time, now it's a short side and the short side's 250. So I'll come in 250 from here, or thereabouts. Take the long side that I did before, and I'm gonna line it up and cut this angle down here. we should be looking pretty good. And take the short bit, parallel to the other short bit, and just cut that one the same size. Make sure they're flush on the ends here. And that's it. All these solid bits. Go into the bin, put them down there with the shaving. And a bit of sawdust we've got here, we'll just suck that up. Finish with this. This over here. Now we'll see how it looks when we put it together. Now, that, for my money, is a pretty good fit. I'll show you how, if you don't get a nice fit like that, you can shoot them. Bench dog.
And for those of you who have missed it, this shooting board I made a couple of videos ago, and I think it's in five parts. You can check it out there, and then show you how to make this from scratch. This is the 45. Tap it home, grab a plane. Bit of oil on that, a bit on the side. Pop it into the shooting board. Have it hanging over just a little bit. And then you just give it a, a couple of passes like that. Cleans up beautifully. On the saw I used, you really don't need a shooting board, but if you're using a coarser back saw, like one of the old Stanley saw boxes, it might be a good idea. But I'll, might as well sit and I'll shorten that one, I'll shorten all of them. If you can, you count the same number of cuts. So with that, I think it was about four, so I'll give this one four. That was five. See so how we go. Yep, that's good. And these are spot on. So that's it. It's a shooting board. If you want to know how to make it, remember, check that video out. And um, I know I keep plugging them, but H&T Gordon Plains, solid timber planes. Beautiful Australian timber. This one's Gigi, by the way. And my all-time newest best friend as far as when it comes to clamping, the Nobex clamping system. We'll do four here, so we don't need these other ones. We'll take these ones off. Got one, two, three, four. Don't need that one. Great thing about working inside is I needed some baking paper so I could do this glue up. And the kitchen's just behind me, so I just shot in there and grabbed some. It's a new roll too. I think they might end up in the shed. And if I use stuff from the kitchen, that means I don't have to buy it for the workshop. And it comes out housekeeping. How good is that? All right. The dry glue up to start with. And if you could smell the smell of roast lamb I'm smelling at the moment, I'm looking forward to tea tonight. And that's looking pretty all right. Now what I'll do is just glue it up. And then we'll move on to phase two when the glue's dried and I'll show you how you can do something to this that is going to totally change the look of what you see now. I like what they call double gluing, which means you put glue on both surfaces. End grain too is notorious for sucking up glue. So generally you've got to have a fair amount on there. And there's glue that's splashed on the paper is the exact reason that paper's there. And it saves my bench from getting glue on it. Not under it, as you can tell, but on it. Okay, just put this back. Honestly, I can't rave about this clamping system enough. Or it's absolutely brilliant. This is no Bex clamping system. Now, I was going to show you a way you can marry all these mouldings up. But quite frankly, that one worked out well. So there was no need to, but I will show you at a later stage. Make sure they're all in nice and tight. If you've got a bucket in your bench too, with a little bit of water in it, not only is it good for Bob so you can have a drink, but just to clean up any of this glue that sort of snuck through. So we get a nice clean joint. And you'll see why in the next part. I'm going to let that dry. When it's dried, I'll show you a really super special effects wax that will change what this frame looks like now into something that really is super special. And then I'll show you something else 
that you can boost whatever it is you put in there. So we'll just wait for that to dry.